Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Tara Dome. It is probably the second most important dungeon in Eternal Evolution, right behind Disa Caves. Disa Caves is where you're gonna get your gear. Uh, obviously, that's gonna be the most important place to go. Of the other uh, of the other two, I think Tara Dome is probably gonna take priority over the uh, Sensaro. I can't decide if I wanna say Kensaro or Sensaro Marsh, but either way, it's where you farm commanders. They're important too, but I think prototypes are probably a little bit more important. Um, and this is, I'm gonna say Taradome is probably your second priority as a, as a dungeon. The issue with that <clears throat> is that it's much harder to progress in this dungeon than the other two. His his power level, for example, here is about 292,000. The other two bosses at stage five are like 118 and 104. Like it's, it's less than half of this boss's power. So this is a tougher dungeon to progress in. But the goal, just like with the other two dungeons early in the game, Get to six ASAP. Get to where you can farm six as soon as possible. Again, that's gonna be much tougher here because it's gonna require some more extensive leveling of your champs, uh, but it's what you wanna keep in mind. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the mechanics of the dungeon, some champs that are gonna shine in here, and I'm gonna talk about Taylor because I've talked about Taylor being uh, probably one of the best PVE boss champs in the game. That's no different for this dungeon but there's a there's an asterisk by it for this dungeon, so we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, let let's look at the boss's mechanics, and then we'll talk about how to put together a team and how to approach this. Okay, uh, he's got two mechanics you need to keep in mind. One of them mainly you need to keep in mind, but two mechanics that are worth mentioning. So the big one that you need to keep in mind is that blue ring around him. Any champ that's not out, not inside of that circle, is going to have their damage reduced drastically. And I'm going to show you an example of that later in the video. I'm gonna show you just how extreme the damage reduction really is. Um, because if you've got a champ on your team that's attacking from outside the ring, you are 100% wasting a spot. It doesn't matter how strong they are, okay? So what you wanna to bring to this is melee characters. Assassins, vanguards, certain summoners like Mooka are gonna do really well in here, but you wanna make sure you're not bringing AOE champs. The only champ you really want to have outside the ring is going to be your healer, okay? And in and, and your healer spot, Serena is going to do much better than, than Liren here, okay? Liren is okay enough, but Serena, that's honestly pretty true across the board. I think Serena is just outshines Liren in every way pretty significantly, uh, but I feel like it's worth mentioning. If you have a Serena, she absolutely needs to be on this team. She's going to particularly outshine Liren here. So uh, Serena needs to be your healer. Beyond that, Heavy, heavy melee. Okay, build your melee champ strong. Run full melee. If we look at the lineup, we'll see some themes here in the in the in the teams. We have Rakana in every team. We have Muka in every team. We have um, Randall in every team. And here we have Liren in every team. But that's probably because they don't have Serena, or because they don't know about Serena. And we have Artis and everyone. Actually, are, are all three all three of these people are running the same team? It changes this periodically. Oh, we're on six. Let's look at five and, and look at the lineup there. It's a little bit different. Yeah, here we've got Serena's. We've got, but a lot of the same, right? A lot of the same stuff going on down here. So you can use that as a reference and build those champs. You won't regret building any of those champs anyway. Even Liren, I still think is worth building and you're going to get some usage out of because there's a lot of areas in the game where you want to run multiple teams. So it's not going to be a, a bad idea to have a second healer. But again, for your main team here, Serena is going to be the one to fill the spot. So uh, the other mechanic of this boss is that you'll see the little line. It'll be easier to see in the battle, but when his health hits this threshold, he's going to disappear. He's going to he's going to shoot everybody back away from him. He's going to disappear. He's going to drop three bombs randomly on the stage and your team has to kill those bombs before they detonate or obviously they're going to hurt your team really bad. So um, honestly, it's a mechanic to be aware of, but it doesn't really change the strategy much. You still need champs that that can do heavy melee damage because they're just going to run and take out the bomb. So it doesn't really change much, but it's worth being aware of. So that the first time you see it happen, you're not like, what the hell's going on? Uh, they're they're going to take care of it on their own. Though. So let's jump in and talk about team setup for this dungeon. And actually, I can't clear. Yeah, we'll do four. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm close to clearing five, even though my power level is significantly lower. Again, understanding the mechanics of these dungeons is going to help you clear it even sometimes through the warning. For example, if I go into five, if I hit challenge, it should ask me, it should ask me if I'm sure. Yeah. Um, it wants me to get my combat power to 233,000. I'm at 180 and we still get him down like a good bit, right? So understanding mechanics 
can let you bypass that that supposed power level threshold, okay? We'll do four just for the sake of the video though. <clears throat> All right, as far as your mechan me mechanic, mechanic, was I gonna say mechanic? As far as your commander goes, I think this guy's gonna be the best for the dungeon technically. He does not fit in with the team I'm running, <laughs> but he is specifically geared toward making vanguards better. Vanguards and assassins maybe? I think is what his description said. I can't remember off the top of my head. He's supposed to make vanguards better. He doesn't apply to Guan Yu or Artis, which are the two I'm running. <clears throat> but uh, I think generally speaking, if you're running a lot of the other champs recommended, like Randall, Mooka, uh, Bailey Hudson, I think he's going to be the way to go. He seems like the, the most solid option. For me, Brynhild is still the best. She's going to boost my Taylor up. Now, Taylor's going to be the, the one that I wanted to talk about. He's kind of a special case. If you run Taylor in this dungeon, you can't do it full, on full auto. The good news there is this is not a game where you're going to run this dungeon a hundred times a day. You've got three energy, three runs that it gives you, and if you wanted to spend those extra energy refills, you can. So it's not something you're going to be sitting here all day doing. But if you want to run Taylor in here, you have to have him off of auto. So. We're going to do this run, and I'm going to show you how to do it if you want to use Taylor. If you want this to be full auto, just put another assassin in instead of Taylor, right? Don't use Taylor. Put Arcana or whoever else in. But if you want to use Taylor, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then I'm going to show you a comparison of his damage if you don't have him, if you don't control him, and you just leave it on full auto, versus if you do control him, and show you how significant the difference is, right? This will be a good idea. To, to illustrate how important it is <clears throat> that you don't have champs outside the blue ring attacking, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into the fight and I'll show you what to do with Taylor. So we are going to turn auto off on Taylor. Everyone else can stay on auto, that's fine. Taylor has to be turned off if you wanna use Taylor. Let's speed it up. The, when Taylor gets his ultimate, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag him right to the inside of the ring. We want him as close to the edge as possible, but still inside the ring, so that he's not taking damage from the boss, but he's inside the ring so that he can do more damage, okay? So I'm thinking roughly around here should be sufficient. And then if you turn him on auto after this, next time he gets his ult, he will jump himself back to the back of the screen. So you do have to lead him off. What I haven't tested yet is if you just click his picture again, if he stays there. But I don't want to ruin the run. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag him. We're just going to leave him right where he is. And it is it is just going to be insane. <laughs> uh, I haven't done this yet. I haven't, I haven't seen his full damage on a run where I do this, but I know what his damage looks like when you don't pull him to the edge of the circle. And it's, it's again, drastically different so this this will be interesting like where, where's he at right now yeah yeah this will be good so now you see the bomb thing they're running through killing the bombs uh, if you don't kill them they are going to hurt it is going to be rough on you but they should be fine all right we're going to put him like i guess around here I, the, the circle hasn't come back up yet but i reckon that's yeah he's a little bit closer than i want him to be but the boss is low enough in health that it's not a big deal. So there you go. That's that's how you have to play that if you want to run Taylor. Now let's take a look at this. He did 723,000, 723.8 thousand damage versus here is the run where I didn't control him and I left him on auto and he did 147,000 damage. So that's a, that's a good, that should put good emphasis on how important it is to make sure you don't have champs outside of the blue circle attacking. Um, that is a ridiculous amount of extra damage that he did simply by pulling him to the edge of the ring. So you absolutely cannot bring <clears throat> AOE ch or, or, or ranged champs in here. It really doesn't matter how strong they are. The damage is going to be reduced so much. It's because of that significant change in damage that I'm almost able to do the next stage, right? Just, just by understanding the mechanics and, and doing things that work in my favor, like dragging Taylor inside the circle. So don't always be deterred by the power threshold. 
and even on other dungeons that you're going to run full auto, you don't lose energy if you fail the run, so you might as well try it. Every time you make some improvements to your team, you might as well try that next stage because maybe you can clear it, even, even though the power threshold isn't there. So anyway, that's, you know, what, 600, almost 600,000 more damage than, uh, than, than when we leave him on full auto and he stays outside of the ring. So uh, again, that's, that's very important. And that's it. We're not talking about champ builds and stuff again, because I want to talk more about the mechanics of the dungeon and, uh, and how you, you can put together a team for it. We're going to do a video very soon on gear, and we're going to talk about how to approach gearing champs in general. And then there also will be some specific champ guides coming out where I'm going to talk about how to build champs specifically. But for this video, it's not really that important. I don't have optimal gear on any of my champs, right? Like like my artist has defense boosting gear where I can fit it in. Taylor has attack boosting gear where I can fit it in. But none of them have a build even worth giving you for reference, right? Just put the best gear that you have on them for now. And then as we get into the higher stages, all of those things are going to start to matter more. But that's it. That's how you approach this dungeon. And it is an important dungeon. So the goal, you're... you're, you're after you get to Disa Caves 6, so that you can start farming Mythic gear from there, this needs to be important to you. You're going to hit the other stages in the other dungeons first because this one's so much more difficult based on power level. Uh, but it is very important that you get this dungeon up because the quicker you can start getting your hands on epic prototypes, uh, you're going to be so much better off, right, having, having epic prototypes. So uh, that's it. I hope this was helpful. Just a quick introduction to that dungeon. We'll talk more about it. I'll test more teams. I'll give you guys some examples of different teams. We'll talk more about all of these things moving forward. And again, there's going to be a pretty extensive gear guide coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, in the next video, maybe not the next video, but sometime very soon, we're going to tackle this dungeon as well and get you prepared for that. And then we're going to continue to bounce around and talk about all the different uh, parts of the game. And hopefully get you guys equipped to, uh, to get in here and, and, and dominate. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here. I do hope it was helpful. Like and subscribe. All that jazz. And we'll see you.